Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Every day in the mainstream media, you see a new article touting the plant-based diet or telling you that whole grains are the best food on the planet for human beings to consume. And I don't think those things are true. I think there are uh, fortunes at stake that would love for you to believe that a plant-based diet and pea protein and whole grains and lots of fruits and vegetables are the best way for human beings to eat. But I have different ideas about that. I call it a proper human diet spectrum. And if what you're looking for is to optimize your health at your current age, whatever that happens to be, then you've found the right place because that's what I've been doing to my own self and with my patients and increasingly with the public at large. So welcome. I'm glad that you could join me this afternoon. I'm going to be trying to answer as many questions as I can from you within the next hour or so. And uh, I love doing these things with people because I'm always getting questions that uh, I don't get from experts in the field. They seem to always be focused on what's the most popular thing? What's, what, what are they going to get the most research money for? And what I, questions I get from you is, how do I improve my health right now? And I really like that question because it tells me that you're motivated, you're ready to change, you know you can be healthier, and you know there is a proper way. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I might go off on a tangent and pontificate a bit, uh, but I think that just helps you understand kind of the bigger picture. Now, first question is from Scott's life and interest. I wonder if Dr. Barry has started sprinted, spl sprinting recently. The answer is yes. Uh, I've been sprinting off and on for years. Uh, used to when we had our old farmhouse before it was burned to the ground. Um, I used to go out and sprint. We had a, a black top road right there that was not very traveled. And so I would go out and sprint very often. Uh, now with the 40 acres, I'm very busy on the farm. And although I've been very, very active, I haven't been doing much sprinting lately. But my recent interview with Dr. Sean O'Mara uh, not only motivated me to, to add this, the, the sprinting back into my weekly regimen, uh, but also some high intensity rowing and some other high intensity uh, training back into my regimen. And I would encourage all you guys to do that as well. What I'd like to know from you is when's the last time you sprinted at top speed? Was it today, yesterday, last week, last month, last year? And it's fine to put in the comments your answer. If the answer is uh, 42 years ago, that's fine too. I just want to know how long it's been since you last sprinted at top speed. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you've got a friend or a family member who is really motivated to improve their health, you might share this link to this video so they can get their questions answered too. Donna's brand new, first time catching a live. Welcome, Donna. Uh, Debbie's a new member of our private group. Uh, we've got thousands of people in our private group who are motivated to achieve their optimal health. And they've taken the next step to join our private group so that they can have more access to behind the scenes stuff, access to more live Q&As uh, and inside of our group, instead of 1,200 people asking questions, it's typically 100 or 200, 300. So we're able to answer questions much more thoroughly and in more detail. Uh, Carno Dane shared this video. Thank you, Carno Dane. That's how I reach new people. There are millions of people out there suffering right now with severe metabolic health that could easily be turned around. There are people with type 2 diabetes that it could be reversed within a matter of months. People with fatty liver that could be reversed within a matter of weeks to months. Uh, high blood pressure that could be lowered significantly without medications. These people are just waiting for you to share this video because they don't know the truth yet. But you can help with that. All right. Thank you very much. Sheila, super stickers and super chats are always appreciated. Uh, Wookiees Gremlin, my wife was diagnosed with gastroparesis via CAT scan. 
any advice for her? She's struggling with this diagnosis. So gastroparesis is when the nerves supplying your stomach are damaged so much that your stomach stops the peristalsis that it normally has, which is typically very significant and aggressive. But with gastroparesis, this slows down and in some cases even stops. The most common cause of gastroparesis is diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes for years and years. And what we've noticed, uh, Wookie, is that many people with even severe gastroparesis, when they slowly adopt a proper human diet, which is by definition very low in carbohydrates, nutritionally de uh, dense, very nutriently dense, ancestrally appropriate, meaning it was stuff that humans ate more than 12,000 years ago, and uninflammatory, that the nerves that control their stomach's peristalsis actually improve. Now, it's not overnight. It takes weeks, if not months. But many people with severe gastroparesis have noticed a, a noticeable improvement in their symptoms after a few months on a proper human diet. Uh, your wife may need to um, puree proper human diet food. She may not be able to tolerate solid food right now. Definitely, she doesn't need to try to do OMAD or one meal a day. She can do three or four small uh, blended meals. Uh, so basically, meat and eggs, put it in the blender, put it in the magic bullet, put it in the ninja and blend it up. And then she can drink it through a big straw. That way she's getting all of the nutrition that comes from a proper human diet. And, and, and she's getting access to that and it's helping her body heal. Also, she's not getting all the unnecessary carbohydrates and fiber that are not going to help her gastroparesis at all. And it's calming down the inflammation around the nerves so that they can actually start to heal. That's what I would recommend. Miles, have you read Born to Run? Wondering where it got the anthropology anatomy wrong for humans as distance runners. So I don't think it got the, the anthropology wrong. Uh, humans were persistence hunters. The, the anthropology is very clear on this, which means that so human beings can sweat and we can also breathe running at full speed. And many other mammals cannot do this. Uh, all animals, most other animals cannot do that at all. Uh, they have to stop running in order to pant if, they, if they're really out of breath. They can't sweat. So if they keep running, they're going to overheat. And so <clears throat> our ancestors would, would just jog along behind an elephant or uh, a caribou or whatever. And the thing would finally be so overheated, so exhausted, it would have to stop and pant. I mean, that might be a mile, two, three, four. And then our, our ancestors are waiting right there with their spears and other weapons. And they dispatch that animal and then cut it up and eat it. That's, that, uh, that's absolutely true. That doesn't mean that, we're, that we should all be distance runners. That means that we use persistent, persistence hunting as one of our strategies. It wasn't our only strategy by any means. But we did do that and we are capable of that. But that does not mean that chronic cardio for hours a day on the treadmill or the Stairmaster or out on the road is, is the, the right way to get back to optimal health. I don't believe that it is. But if you're starving to death, you can absolutely chase down a um, moose and you will win that every time if you're persistent enough for long enough. Brett, past my one year carnivorsary earlier this month. So Brett's been eating nothing but meat for a year and he, he hasn't died hasn't had a heart attack, hasn't had a stroke. Thanks for the guidance and advice over the last year. Too many victories to list. So not only has Brett's health not gotten worse, because, you know, if you talk to the average doctor or dietitian, they'll say, oh, if you eat meat for a year, you'll, you'll get cancer. You'll have a heart attack. You'll have a stroke. Well, Brett has, got, has gotten so many improvements in his health that he couldn't even list them all. So I, I find that quite telling as to the power of a proper human diet. Buck, I was stung by a bee or a wasp. Four days later, swelling, red, itchy, and sore. Is Benadryl, prednisone, and antibiotic the right thing? So you almost certainly don't need the antibiotic. The redness and swelling is from the histamine release and from the inflammation. Uh, now, if you've got pus draining out of it, <clears throat> you may have developed a bacterial superinfection, but almost certainly the antibiotic is unnecessary and it's going to have side effects in your gut and other places that you don't need. Uh, the Benadryl absolutely will help the itching and the histamine release. The, it depends on how bad the, the swelling is. <clears throat> so 
if it's on your face and, and you're swollen up so much you can't see, then you might need a few days of prednisone to calm that down so you can go about your daily life again. But if it's a if you got stung on your leg or arm, and, and I don't care if the swelling's this big around, the prednisone is going to have a bunch of untoward side effects and it will lower the swelling, but the swelling is going to go down anyway. So Benadryl plus or minus a few days of prednisone, depending on where it's at and how much it's affecting your daily living. And the antibiotics are probably completely unnecessary. Moon, 30 year old female, three months ketovore, testosterone 51, free testosterone 2.1, sex hormone binding globulin 137.6, estradiol 38 uh, in the ovulation phase, progesterone, yeah, effectively zero. Uh, it sounds okay, except for that progesterone. At the age of 30, you absolutely shouldn't have a progesterone of less than 0.1. Uh, you're probably having trouble sleeping, having trouble with anxiety and mood. You may even be, be having trouble with weight loss. I would talk to somebody who understands um, hormone optimization with bioidentical hormones and see if you can't get that progesterone fixed. Thank you, Ronald. Salubrious Farm Homestead. Discussion on this week's Zoom call re regarding candida. I have been fighting with it for a year. You mentioned it might be uh, an immune system issue. Could you expand on that? <clears throat> what tests, what labs? So <clears throat> when anybody with a candidal overgrowth problem takes an antifungal, the candida is going to go completely away. Now, it may come right back, but only if you're eating a diet that's got your immune system confused and inflamed, that's high in carbohydrates, high in sugar, because candida loves sugar. Uh, but there are some people, and so also when you adopt a very, very low carbohydrate diet, candida is going to go away, stay away. And so if you're already eating a proper human diet and you're still having candida overgrowth that's been verified by a physician, then you might have a, an immune system compromising disease. These would include, but are not limited to, hepatitis C. <clears throat> Uh, liver failure, uh, very uncontrolled diabetes, HIV, AIDS, any of these things that really, or if you're on a high dose of steroids long term or any of the biologics for autoimmune conditions that basically uh, cripple your immune system, then you might you might have continual candidal overgrowth. Keep in mind that very, easy, very often candidal overgrowth is is falsely diagnosed. And I find this usually is it's falsely diagnosed by naturopathic doctors and uh, holistic doctors. Uh, most allopathic doctors are not going to over over diagnose can candidal overgrowth or global candidal anything that you need a handful of supplements for. Uh, but naturopaths sometimes believe this is a real thing. And it can be if you're eating a high carb inflammatory diet or you have immune system um, compromise. But if you if you have an intact immune system and you're eating very low carb, the candida is going to go away naturally. Judy, I am hearing impaired. Yes, Judy, I'm sorry. I forgot that there's a weird little button down at the very bottom that I have to click to turn on closed captions. I will. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry. I'll do it next time. I forgot to do that. Uh, TD, thank you very much. Chris, diabetic co-workers who goes to the bathroom and then it smells like strong bile after any ideas using quite example to encourage PhD for any reasons. Uh, my first idea would be to wait a few minutes after that person goes to the bathroom before you go in there. Let the fan have a chance to work. Uh, secondly, this could be any of multiple different things causing this with the biliary tree. Uh, the diabetes could absolutely be causing a neuropathy of the nerves controlling the gallbladder or the common bile duct or the uh, duodenum of the small intestine. Uh, you can have uh, neuropathy of the stomach, which we call gastroparesis, but you can also have that with every other organ in the digestive tree. And so keep leading by quiet example and being ready to answer your friend's questions when the questions come up. And hopefully you can have him or her on a proper human diet before long. Jose, thank you, Dr. Barry. Carnivore since April 1st, down 75 pounds. Since April 1st, four months, down 75 pounds. 25 more to go to get my ideal weight and add more muscle. Proper human diet is the key to health. I, I agree with that, Jose. I think you're exactly right about that. I think that 85 to 90% of the battle 
for weight loss if you're overweight or obese is diet. You got to fix the diet. You can run on the treadmill at the gym all day long. And if you're still eating a high carb, grain based, plant based diet with lots of fruit smoothies, you're never going to lose any substantial amount of weight whatsoever. Thank you very much. Tronzer went keto to help with herniated disc in the neck. Any thoughts? Also got bad insomnia from keto so far. Should I eat all my carbs before bed? Uh, so definitely if you eat a, a carb load, that's going to make you drowsy. Uh, just like if you take a, an Ambien or you drink, have three shots of whiskey or you smoke some weed, that's going to make you drowsy too. But that doesn't mean that that's good for you. Uh, a lot of people, when they st first start a proper human diet, they'll have a few nights of just having so much energy that they have trouble getting to sleep. This typically calms down after a few days and then they actually sleep better than they did before they started a PhD. Um, <clears throat> very many people with a herniated disc notice that when they adopt a, an uninflammatory proper human diet, that, that herniated disc pain and all kinds of other neuropathies coming from spinal conditions, the symptoms get noticeably improved. In, in many cases, so much so that they cancel the surgery that they were planning on having. They, they don't need all the prescription drugs anymore. This is very common. Uh, now, in order for that to happen for you, Trouser, you don't need to be eating all the keto cakes and cookies and pies and keto shakes and keto desserts and keto pancakes. That's not keto. If anything at the grocery says keto on the label, it's not keto. It's bullshit. Keto is the following. Half your plate covered with fatty meat and eggs. Half of your plate covered with low-carb veg. A few nuts and a few berries for dessert. That's keto, okay? There's no such thing as keto bread. Now, there are some versions of, of bread that you can make at home, but currently in the supermarket, there is no such thing as a true keto bread. There is no such thing as a true keto shake. All of that stuff is bullshit. Don't fall for that. If you want to decrease the inflammation around the nerve root enough that, that your, your neck pain and your perhaps your arm pain get better, you got to eat a keto that's very uninflammatory, which means real meat, real eggs, real low-carb veg. That's keto. Keep us up to date, Trouser. I want to know how this goes. Anna, no question, just saying thank you for your videos. They've helped me so much. I'm feeling amazing, sleeping great. And getting slimmer, last cholesterol check was uh, 231 total with an HDL of 87. So her total cholesterol is high. And for a lot of people, initially, that freaks them out. And it freaks their doctor out. What their doctor forgot to tell them, or maybe their doctor didn't even know to start with, especially in cases like Anna, is all of the, the cholesterol medicine research was done in men. So how do we even know that applies to women at all to start with? And then secondly, all of that research was done. It was funded by the drug company that, that stood to make billions of dollars selling the drug. They designed the study. They picked the researchers. They vetted the results. And there's actually this thing in medicine and nutrition research called the file drawer problem. Did you know that if Pfizer or Merck or some of the other big pharma companies uh, say, hey, we're going to do a, a research uh, study about this new pill we've got to lower Anna's total cholesterol. And they do the study. They design it themselves, do it themselves. And then when they get the results back, if the results are like, yeah, this pill didn't do anything, they don't have to publish that. Did you know that? Yeah, they can put that in a file drawer and never tell a soul about that. Every researcher on the study has, has filed a non-disclosure. They signed a non-disclosure so they can never talk about it or they'll be sued out of existence. Uh, it just goes away. It ceases to exist. Now, in my opinion, that's not how real science should be done. I think the results of every study, both positive and negative results, should be published. That would help all scientists know, oh, okay, that pill doesn't work. So there's no use doing any more studies with that pill. That would help us advance science much quicker. And it would prevent all the dead ends that we're stuck in right now, like the uh, oh, high cholesterol is bad dead ends and the oh, eating saturated fat is bad for you, that dead ends. And the plant-based diet is best for you, dead ends. Those are all dead ends. They're not going to take you any, anywhere healthier. 
but they will make some mega corporations super, super rich if the research turns out the way they want it to. Good question. Smedley Butler the third. Deadlift Friday with Dr. Barry in my ears. I love it, Smedley. I hope sweat's dripping off the end of your nose right now. It does when I deadlift, I can tell you that. Sayon Soul, I lost 15 pounds this month during the challenge. So in our private group, uh, this is a, a member. Nisha is having a, a challenge for this entire month and uh, lost 15 pounds this month alone. Huzzah, huzzah, I love it. Now, if you want to become part of our private group, there's a link in the show notes. That's not a requirement. I'm still going to keep putting out free content on YouTube and other social media. But if you need more involvement, if you need if you need a tribe of people who are not going to try to discourage you and not going to try to trip you up, like maybe some of your friends and family members are doing, I've got the tribe for you. There's a link in the show notes. Mel's Fresh Start. Two weeks carnivore after two years whole food plant-based. Type 2 diabetic. I have early kidney disease. How do I protect my kidneys on carnivore? So Mel has been indoctrinated with the plant-based is best dead end. And Mel currently believes that eating meat is bad for his kidneys. When, in fact, nothing could be further from the truth. Any doctor or dietitian who says, oh, protein's bad for your kidneys, or that eating meat is bad for your kidneys, or eating eggs is bad for your kidneys, they are currently ignorant. There is no research to support that. This is a myth in the medical and, and dietitian community. Meat is good for your kidneys, Mel, not bad. If any doctor says, oh, Dr. Berry's wrong, meat, too much meat is bad for your kidneys, ask that doctor to produce the research that proves that. And you, they'll go, uh, what? You're like, yeah, you, I mean, you seem so adamant and you're so sure. Print me out the research that you're basing your opinion on because, you know, you're giving me your medical opinion, so it must be based on something other than just your random belief. I'll wait. You can email it to me. Take your time. Send me the studies that prove that eating meat, eggs, protein is bad for my kidneys. Uh, you'll never get that email. Or you'll get some email with some epidemiological studies that show a possible association between eating meat and kidney disease. So the study will say eating meat may, but you guys are smart enough to know that anytime you use the word may, you can also mark that out and insert the, the phrase may not, because may equals may not, right? Eat your meat meal. This is actually going to improve your kidney function. It's not going to make it worse. Kevin's Kevin Buff. I've been on keto for a while. GERD has gotten a lot better. I also have a severe anxiety disorder. Could the anxiety be the reason for the GERD not going away completely? It's possible, Kevin. It could be. But I'll tell you my personal experience. Uh, I used to have severe heartburn. I mean, I took two Nexium every day. It was so bad. And when I went keto, it got 80% better, much better. I could get by taking an occasional Tums or a shot of apple cider vinegar. But when I went carnivore, it went completely away. And it's stayed away for, what, four and a half years now. That's why I stayed carnivore is because my, my reflux used to be so painfully severe that it affected my ability to talk. And I talked for a living, so that was a problem. Uh, so I would say, let, why don't you why don't you try 90 days of carnivore and see how your reflux is after that? Mona B, do you recommend postmenopausal women to wean down and stop S trace? Uh, I'm 57, only take 0.5 milligrams a day. So S trace uh, is fake estrogen. It is not real estrogen. It is a fake patented molecule that resembles estrogen. But it couldn't be real estrogen or they couldn't have got a patent on it. So I 100% recommend you stop taking that right now because it's been proven to increase a woman's risk of breast cancer, uterine cancer, blood clot, stroke, and heart attack. Now, it's not a huge increase in risk, but it's absolutely a proven risk factor. 
If you need hormone optimization, find a doctor in your area who does bioidentical hormone optimization. That's never been proven to increase your risk of any of those things. Thank you, KK, very much. Tim, my mom is eating a high-carb diet. She thinks it's very healthy to eat a lot of rice, bread, and pasta. So many people do, Tim. She said, my diet, which is keto high fat, is bad for my health. How do I convince her to do keto? Now, first of all, Tim, this is your mama. You need to be respectful to your mama, okay? You can't make her do keto. And I know that's not what you meant. But the best way to convince a family member is to lead by quiet example. As the weeks and months go by, your mom needs to see you getting healthier. She needs to see you getting slimmer. She needs to see you putting on muscle. She needs to see you mentally healthier. You're happier. It's harder to make you mad. You're not down in the dumps anymore. You're always happy and eager. And you're always, you're, you're more loving now because all those things tend to happen when somebody adopts a proper human diet. When she's seen enough of a change in you, and then maybe you can talk to an uncle, talk to a brother or sister, talk to one of her grandkids and get them on a proper human diet as well. And when she sees enough improvement in her family, she'll realize that she's been duped and she'll adopt a proper human diet as well. Terry, Parkinson's and carnivore. Parkinson's, just like Alzheimer's and Huntington's and other neurological conditions, respond beautifully to a proper human diet. And it can be fatty meat, heavy keto. It can be ketovore or it can be carnivore. You're going to slow down the progression and you're going to decrease the severity of the symptoms. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's going to cure Parkinson's. That's not going to happen. But what if you could slow the progression by 80%? That'd be a great victory. What if you could decrease the symptom severity by 80%? Wouldn't that be a great victory? This also goes for mental health diagnoses like depression, anxiety, OCD, uh, PTSD, ADHD. All these things get less severe when you adopt and eat a proper human diet. Lisa, eating keto for a while, but not seeing a lot of weight loss. I take Effexor, which is absolutely going to slow down your ability to burn fat. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, Lisa. Uh, receive good labs and feel better with loss of inflammation. So I'm keto for life. Uh, huzzah. Uh, what you should be noticing, Lisa, is that your mental health issue that you were taking Effexor for should have gotten better enough that you can have a conversation with your doctor and say, hey, doc, if you're taking uh, 37.5 or whatever your dose is of effects or say, hey, can we try to cut that in half? And the more you cut that dose with the help of your doctor, the less difficult it's going to be for you to burn off the fat. We've got hundreds of people in our private community who have used a proper human diet to wean down and in many cases stop medications like Effexor, like Prozac, like Zoloft, uh, like Paxil. They just, they just don't need them anymore. And that's one thing we talk about inside of our private group a lot is how to de-prescribe, how to wean down this medicine versus that medicine, because some you have to wean very, very slowly. Others, you can just stop taking them right now and there'll be no Ill, to, Ill effects. But you don't want to do that without talking to your doctor and or joining our private group so that you've got that sounding board of thousands of people just like you who are weaning down these medicines. Good luck on that, Lisa. Keep us up to date. I want to know how that turns out. Half the man. Hi again from the UK, Doc. Just wanted to say how much I appreciate all your advice and guidance. 12 months on keto, then carnivore diet has literally saved my life. I have lost 165 pounds. Whew. What is that? That's 12 stone. Is that how you guys would say that? 12-ish stone? So, brother, it is my pleasure. That's why I do these lives. That's why I do what I do on social media is to help people just like half the man. Uh, half the man's watching from UK. It's what time is it? It's 8, 830 over there, right? 930. Where are you guys watching from in the world right now? What city, what state, what country? Where are you at in the world? Tell me in the comments. It's easy to type it in. Tim. Hi, Doc. First time watcher. Welcome, Tim. Uh, my wife and I started about a week ago. I've lost 10 pounds in a week. She's lost nothing. Yep. 
even uh, had bad stomach pain. She thinks she has PCOS. What should she do? Thanks, you are a godsend. So on average, if a man and, a, and if, a, if a husband and wife start eating keto together or carnivore together, the man's going to lose fat faster than the woman. This is a hormone issue. This is more proof that weight loss is hormonally mediated. It's not about calories in, calories out. Counting calories won't help you at all. The reason you're losing fat faster than hers is because you're, you have male hormones, and we males tend to lose weight faster than women on average. Now, with her with PCOS as well, it's her weight loss is going to be even slower. But now if she's having stomach pains, it's probably just her stomach, maybe her gallbladder, getting used to uh, the healthy higher fat that comes with a proper human diet. She might need to just back up to low carb uh, with only real food, one ingredient food, do low carb for a week or two, and then try to ease back into keto. But she's going to lose slower than you. That's just going to happen. Okay, but if she sticks with it, she too will lose the unwanted fat. That's going to happen, but it sometimes takes longer in women. Who else is a first time watcher? Type new in the comments if this is the first time you've ever caught me live. ZMVP, uh, Ketivore, 80 pounds down since May the 14th. So that's three months, lost 80 pounds. June, July, August, three months, three months, guys, having issues with loose skin. Yeah, when you lose weight really fast. And let me just say this, you're not going to lose weight too fast on keto, ketoable carnival. You're not going to lose weight at an unhealthy rate on these diets because the only thing you're doing differently is you're eating the proper food and avoiding the high carb inflammatory foods. So there's no way that could be an unhealthy rate of weight loss. But a lot of people's skin doesn't tighten up as fast as other people's skin. Part of this is genetic, and part of it is how much overweight you are to start with. Now, we have had many people in our community who started out having all this loose skin. But as they continue to eat a proper human diet, therefore feeding their skin cells all of the good nutrition they need to improve and to replace themselves with even healthier skin cells, the skin continues to tighten up. Also, uh, people in our private group who do daily intermittent fasts of 18 to 22 hours, so they eat one meal or two meals a day in a, in a restricted window, they notice that the, the skin shrinks a lot faster. Or they'll do a two-day fast once a week or a three-day fast every other week. That also helps the loose skin tighten up by a process known as autophagy. So, yeah, that's that's what's going to help is keep eating a proper human diet and increase the amount of time that you're fasting slowly and give it time. It's going to take months for this skin to tighten up. The only quick way to get skin to tighten up is to go see the plastic surgeon. But that's going to cost a lot of money and increase your risk of, of disastrous side effects. Thank you very much, Alice. Bruce Wilkie. Dr. Barry, thank you for all you do. I've lost 130 pounds, gained it back after eating excessively cheeses and sugars, really let myself and others down. I'm back on the way down, 70 pounds down so far. It, this seems to be taking longer this time around. Any advice? Also very common, Bruce, when, when people mess up and fall off the train and they gain it all back, which is super, super rare on a proper human diet, the second time, it seems to be a little more difficult. And I think it's basically your body telling you, Bruce, that, that it's sick and tired of this stupid shit. It's ready for you to, to, to stick with it and stop this. So for any of you guys who were eating keto for a while, and then you're like, well, you know, it was my anniversary and I had a piece of cake. And then all of a sudden, it's three weeks later or three months later, and I'm still eating crap. That's not falling off the wagon. That's giving up and quitting. So let's not call it that. It's all of us are human. We're all fallible. We all make mistakes. Every now and then you're going to trip and fall on a piece of pie. But what you do in that situation is you immediately recognize your mistake. Then you look in the mirror and you forgive yourself. And then you don't do it again. You don't ever say, well, I screwed up now. I guess I'll just go back to eating junk. Mm-mm, mm-mm. This makes me worry that you don't have a good why. Why are you doing this? What is your goal? If it's just to lose weight, 
That's not a good why. You're not going to stick with that. The, you you want to know what my why is? Because I've got six kids and two grandkids and a bunch more grandkids and eventually great grandkids coming. I want to be the granddad whose house they want to go to. I want to be the granddad whose house they want to spend the summer at because I'm so cool. I'm so healthy. I'm going for hikes in the woods with them. I'm taking them fishing. We're riding on the four wheeler. I'm plowing the backyard, kicking the soccer ball. That's my why. And so even when on Nisha and I's anniversary, we go somewhere and I have a bite or two of cheesecake. Never does it even occur to me to say, well, I screwed the pooch now. Just forget it. No, those grand, those great grandbabies are still coming. I got to be healthy for them so I can be the cool granddad, great granddad, maybe even great, great granddad. Who knows? Does that make sense? So I'm afraid, Bruce, your why might not have been strong enough. You need a good why. And then just stick with it. It might be slower this time. But if I told you, hey, just down the road is $50 million, Bruce, and here's a little tricycle that you can ride down the road and get it. But the bad news is the tricycle only goes two miles an hour. Would you just say, well, if it's going to take that long, screw it. I don't want it. I, I doubt you'd say that. I think you'd get on the tricycle and be going wee, 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 to get the $10 million. That's that your health is worth way more than $10 million, way more. So I don't care if it takes a little longer. Huzzah that you've already got 70 of it back off. So let's keep going. And let's have a good, strong why that when somebody says something negative or somebody tries to tear you down, you're like, mm -mm, this is way more important than whatever horse crap you just said. I'm going to keep going. Marcel, COVID right now. Loss of appetite, drinking water and, and relight. That's electrolytes uh, made by Redmond's bone broth. Sometimes add eggs, carnivore within five days. I eat only five slices of steak. Is that bad? No, I mean, you're sick. Uh, many people, when they have a viral infection, they'll just fast and not eat at all. It seems like it, that the, it, this is almost like a built-in thing that helps your body heal faster. All mammals do that. If they're sick or injured, they'll very often stop eating for a few days. And so if eat what you're able to eat. If you're not hungry, just don't eat until you get hungry. CB, follow-up pet question, part one, if okay. Dog has high liver enzymes since puppyhood, same age as your lily. Ultrasound shows undersized liver. It very well could be a birth defect. Could higher enzyme level be her normal? Y yes. Now, I'm not a vet, but if she has a very small liver, her liver may be having to work overtime to do its job, and therefore she might have elevated liver enzymes. Her liver might also be more sensitive to things and more easily injured. So she absolutely needs to be eating a proper canine diet with, with not many uh, deviations from that at all. Matthew, do you suggest getting to go weight with carnivore first and then start lifting weights for muscle mass? I'm a runner normally. I will add sprints soon. Yeah, 100% do the sprints, Matthew, if you're already a runner. Uh, when I was doing the live interview with Dr. O'Mara, which all you guys should watch if you haven't watched it already, he's a wealth of information. If you look at somebody who runs a 100-yard dash in the Olympics, the 100-yard sprint, 100 meters, versus somebody who runs the 20,000 meter. It's you you if you do, if I stood up a 100 meter sprinter and a 20,000 meter runner side by side, 10 times out of 10 you'd be able to pick out this guy's the sprinter, that guy's the 20,000, the long runner. Because the sprinter is going to have much more natural muscle and it's not because they lift weights all the time. In many cases they don't. Any of you guys remember Herschel Walker he used to play for Georgia? I remember an interview he did when he was at, at Georgia and they asked him because he was jacked and they said, how do you, wh what's your workout? And he was like, I don't ever lift weights. I'll, I sprint and I do body weight exercises like chin ups, push ups, and, and lots of sprinting. And he was jacked up muscular. Now I don't know what else he was doing, but I know he said that on national TV. And so, but then also when I look at a, at a sprinter versus a long distance runner, it's obvious who has more muscle. 
So if any of you guys wanted to put on muscle everywhere, eat lots of fatty red meat and start sprinting, start lifting heavy things. That's how you're going to put on muscle as you lose. And you know, I don't think you have to lose the weight first. I think you can do both at the same time. Your body's quite accomplished at doing multiple things at the same time. Now, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I think it's, your body's perfectly capable of burning fat and building muscle at the same time, regardless of what some gurus out there might tell you. AK, reaching out again, lost both ovaries to massive cysts on hormone replacement therapy, having uh, a lot more allergies, looking into bioidentical. Yes, please, that, that's going to help a lot. Having a hard time, anything I can do in the meantime, uh, eat as low carb as you can, get as much sleep as you can, get morning sunshine, walk barefooted on the on the grass, on the dirt, uh, and keep looking for a doctor in your area who does bioidentical hormone optimization. That's what you need to do. Thank you, Rihanna. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you, Juanella. Chance and Maddie, best anthropological evidence were meat eaters. Yeah, great. So it actually goes back to paleoanthropological evidence. So there's this test, Chance or Maddie, called stable isotope analysis. And we can actually do stable isotope analysis on our ancestors' bones, teeth, uh, cartilage, if it's still available. Uh, and we can tell what they ate while they were alive. We can even do it in for baby teeth that were shed by our ancestors 100,000 years ago. We can tell what that baby ate before they lost their baby teeth. Were they breastfed? Yes, 100% all the time they're breastfed but we can even tell where the proteins were coming from that the mother was eating and then also the first foods the baby ate which was always meat so we can tell that that if you look at any fossil any skeleton of a human being that's over 12 13,000 years old and you check the stable isotope analysis they were meat eaters it may have been seafood it may have been uh river fish or it was animals that was the predominant food that we ate. And in paleoanthropological research community, there's no argument about that. They know without a doubt that's true. Like if you stood up at a paleoanthropological meeting and said, I think a plant-based diet is best and I think it's ancestrally appropriate and I think we've been eating plant-based for a million years, they would all be like, he must not have seen the research. Okay. We can even tell if people were eating C3 plants versus C4 plants. So some plants do photosynthesis a little differently than other plants. Corn is more of a, it does it more like some grasses and then other plants don't do it that way. We can tell which one of those you're eating 100,000 years ago just by doing the stable isotope analysis. Uh, so I'm going to be doing an interview in the, in the next few weeks with my good friend, Dr. Bill Schindler, who is an anthropologist, an archeologist. And we're gonna be talking about this very thing. So if you're not already subscribed to this channel, click that subscribe button so that when I post that, that live interview with Bill Schindler, uh, you'll get a notification. Jennifer, ask doctor to change my medication from levothyroxine to NDT. Uh, for hypothyroidism. He suggested adthiza uh, that contains mannitol. Will taking this med throw me out of ketosis or stall weight loss? Yeah, you don't, you don't need mannitol. Ask your doctor about either Armour Thyroid or Nature Thyroid, WP Thyroid, NP Thyroid, or if you're in Canada, ask about ERFA, E-R-F-A. These are naturally desiccated uh, thyroid replacement hormones, and they shouldn't contain any mannitol. Kimberly, how do you become a PhD mentor? I have followed you for years uh, and usually guess your answers before you say it. So in order to become a, PA, a PhD mentor and a moderator here on our YouTube channel and get the blue wrench, you need to be a member of our private community. And you need to have been a member of our private community for enough time that Nisha and I have watched your activity. We can tell that you love people. You love interacting with people. You love teaching people. And, and you have also improved your health immensely. 
and that the answers you give other people are indeed correct. And then uh, we've got a discount code for members of our private group so that they can take the Primal Health coaching program and get like $1,500 off. And so they can be a certified health coach and a PhD mentor. And so that's how you do that. If you're already a member of the group, Kimberly, and I kind of think you are, uh, reach out to Nisha or I and, uh, or talk to one of our existing mentors and tell them that you'd like to be considered. That's how you do that. Middle, Dr. Barry, thank you. I always look forward to your new informative video. Thank you very much, Middle. Thank you, Timothy. Schnag, your words alone have given me hope that there's life beyond the meds. There is life beyond the meds. The meds were the poison killing me, not my body's issue. 13 weeks lion diet have lost 30 pounds. So what is the lion diet? That's a subset of a carnivore diet. So carnivores, meat and eggs, animal products only. A lion diet is for somebody with severe autoimmune conditions, severe, severe inflammation. So you wind up eating just ruminant meat, salt, and water. Ruminant meat being beef, goat, sheep, lamb, just ruminants. Because ruminants, when they eat plants, magic happens in their four-chamber stomach. Okay, the bacteria in there change that into the most nutritious, the most healing fatty meat on the planet. And uh, chicken's fine. Pork is fine. I'm not anti-chicken or pork like a lot of uh, keto influencers out there. I, but I do think ruminant meat is the best meat on the planet as a food for human beings. I think grass-fed, grass-finished is the uh, ruminant meat is the absolute best. There is nothing better. But if all you can afford is the is the supermarket beef, that's going to improve your health 8,000%, whereas grass-fed, grass-finished might increase and improve your health 10,000%. It's a little bit better, but it's not enough better to break the bank for if you just can't afford it. Garrett, will PhD help with uterine fibroids? I actually have a video on this channel about fibroids. Uh, fibroids, the vast majority of the time, are either caused by or worsened by hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation. So, if you're the only way to get hyperinsulinemia is either to be eating a high carb diet or have an insulinoma. And the only way to get the chronic inappropriate inflammation is by ingesting things that cause inflammation or being around things that cause inflammation. So the vast majority of women with fibroids, when they adopt a, a very uninflammatory, low carb, proper human diet, their insulin level goes back down to normal and their levels of inflammation go back down to normal. And then the fibroids just start to shrink. Now, this doesn't happen in every single case, but in the majority of, of cases I've gotten feedback from, the fibroid absolutely got some degree smaller. Tampa native, thank you very much. Diana, thank you very much. Trisha, stool test came back with no parasites, rather several bad bacteria. Will carnivore help heal my infection and leaky gut? I have Hashi's and MTHFR. So first of all, Trisha, which bacteria? Because it's normal for human poop to have hundreds of different bacteria in it, okay? A lot of people that, that have no bowel problems whatsoever will have C. diff in their, in their poop. And their doctor wants to put them on antibiotics for it, even though they have no symptoms. Now, if you're having severe C. diff symptoms after taking a strong round of antibiotics, then you may need, you may need to take the vancomycin. You may need that for C. diff. But if you're like, I don't really have any bowel problems, then you don't need to treat that. So I'm not saying you don't need treatment, but I'm just saying it's very common for doctors to overtreat bacteria that they found in the gut. That's not necessarily a reason for antibiotics at all. Now, if you have leaky gut, carnivore 100% is going to reverse leaky gut within just a few weeks to a month or two. Uh, many women with Hashimoto's, Tricia, notice that their Hashimoto's is effectively in remission after a few months of a, a carnivore diet. And with the MTHFR, that's going to cause you to have problems metabolizing B vitamins, especially the B vitamins found in, in the usual supplement. Uh, 
but you're going to be able to utilize all the B vitamins found in meat just fine. Westfield, 21 days carnivore and lost eight pounds, but have stalled out for five days. So you've, you've eaten carnivore for 26 days and you've lost eight pounds. That's not a stall, Westfield. That's a victory. What are you talking about? Any tips on how to break out of a stall? That You haven't lost weight for five days. That's not a stall. It's very common for the human body to take a, a break because losing weight in the wild, which your, your body still thinks we're in the wild. They have no idea. Your body has no idea that we live in modern society. And so anytime you're losing weight rapidly in the wild, that's, that's bad. And your body will put the brakes on that. And so we, all of us who are overweight or obese, we want to lose weight just like this fast. But your body's not okay with that. And so you're going to lose weight like this. Lose weight, pause. Lose weight, pause. And that's going to happen over and over and over, okay? Sometimes people will have a weight loss pause of three months, six months. It doesn't mean you're not getting healthier. It doesn't mean you're not having daily body recomposition. It doesn't mean that you're decrease that you're not decreasing your risk of hundreds of chronic medical problems. You are. You're doing all that stuff, but you just haven't lost weight in five days. You need to start taking a daily dose of vitamin P. That stands for patience. And remember that this is doing hundreds of things to benefit your body in the background. Also, if you have one cheap meal, I've already talked about this. So I'll say it again. You recognize the fact that you messed up, then you look in the mirror and you forgive yourself, and then you forget it happened, and you go right back on carnivore. That's what happens if you have a cheap bite or a cheap meal or a cheap day or a cheap week or month or year. The moment that you become aware of your ignorance, you go, this is all my fault. I screwed up. And then you look in the mirror and say, I'm sorry, and I forgive you. And then you get right back on carnivore and act like it never happened. That's how you, that's how you fix that. It's just that simple. Denise, what is the difference in armor and compounded T3, T4? Uh, it, it, potentially no difference whatsoever. Uh, compounded T3 and T4, if it comes from a bovine source, is going to be real T3 and T4, the actual real molecules. Now, if they're using synthetic T3 and synthetic T4, then it may not even be the actual molecules. But the majority of compounded T3, T4 is from desiccated uh, porcine thyroid. And therefore, it's going to be bioidentical. Okay. Uh, armor thyroid has a certain ratio of T3 to T4. It also contains not just T3 and T4. Armor and nature thyroid also contain T2 and T1 and T0 and calcitonin which compounded T3 and T4 may not have, but you need all those. Many of, uh, many of the things that, that T1 and T2, the effects they might have in the human body, nobody even knows yet because they haven't been researched. But we know the human thyroid, when it's functioning properly, makes those things, but we don't even know what they do. Chin wart, who named you that? Does vaping have any effect on the carnivore diet? Yeah. Uh, so especially if you're using a, a vape juice that's sweet tasting, that's probably going to keep your insulin level elevated enough that you're not going to lose fat as quickly as you would otherwise. Also, you're going to be getting chronic inflammation in your mouth, your throat, and your lungs from the, the vape vapor. That's going to make you less, less healthy. Uh, don't let anybody tell you that vaping is healthy. I think that vaping is way less bad than smoking cigarettes, but it's definitely not healthy. And But the good thing about vaping is, and it's why I tell people who are currently cigarette smokers, you got to switch to vaping immediately, is because it's much easier to wean down a vape than it is to wean down cigarettes. Timothy, how do I raise my HDL? It's 36. LDL is 78. Triglycerides 91. Uh, total is 131 on Lipitor. So realize, first of all, Timothy, that your Lipitor is probably not helping you in any way. 
Secondly, uh, you're probably somebody who has uh, at least in part a genetically low uh, HDL. I'm one of these people too. The way I increased my HDL was by lifting heavy weights, lifting heavy things. Uh, also, I think sprinting or high intensity rowing or swimming will increase your HDL and then eating lots of fatty red meat. That's how you're going to raise that HDL. Scott, no questions. Count me a fan. Loving the PhD community. Link is in the show descriptions for those wanting to know how to join. Now, Scott wouldn't spend eight bucks to tell you. I don't know. I don't know Scott personally. He would not spend eight bucks of his hardware money to tell you to join our community unless he thought it was going to do you some good. Scott's paying it forward right now. He's gotten so much health improvement that he's he's saying, I've, I've received so much benefit. I need to pay it forward. And that's what he just did. That's what that's called. Thank you for that, Scott, very much. Uh, we've got mentors. We've got thousands of community members. We got Nisha and we got me in the community waiting to help you realize your best health. All you got to do is click the link. Amelia, hello. If I tested sensitive to cow's milk, can I eat butter without any problem? So if what you mean, Amelia, is that you took a food sensitivity test and it told you you were sensitive to cow's milk, you wasted your money. Food sensitivity tests are a complete and utter waste of time and waste of money. They don't help you in any way. Now, with that being said, the vast majority of adult humans on the planet Earth are sensitive to cow's milk and they'll have some degree of inflammation from either the lactose in the milk or the bovine casein and whey proteins. Some few people seem to not have any inflammation from drinking cow's milk at all, uh, but the vast majority, three, three fourths, if you took a hundred random people from all over the earth, 75 of them will be sensitive to dairy as an adult. So I don't recommend anybody drink milk, even raw milk. It's not, it's not made for adult mammals, and that's what you are. You're an adult mammal. Butter is the fat portion of the dairy. Now, remember earlier I said it's either the lactose, the milk sugar that people are sensitive to, or it's the, the casein and the whey that they're sensitive to. It's never the butter. It's never the fat that people are sensitive to. So every human on the planet can eat butter. Ver, there may be one one thousandth of one percent of the adult human population who has a, some kind of reaction to butter. It's so rare; it's not even worth talking about. But but the the lactose and the casein and the whey in liquid dairy, the majority of humans on the planet, they'll either have skin inflammation, they'll have gut inflammation, they'll have joint inflammation, or they'll notice a worsening of their mental health if they're drinking liquid milk. Now raw. Dairy it seems to be less bad for this than pasteurized, homogenized dairy. It, it, it appears to be less bad, but then also you have to watch it very carefully to make sure that it was handled properly from the time it came out of the cow's or the goat's teat until the time it went in your mouth. If it's mishandled at any step in that chain, it could, it could cause a serious infection. So I'm, I, I'm not a proponent of any adult on the planet drinking the milk from any mammal, including humans. There are some bodybuilders who buy breast milk from women who are lactating because they think it's going to help them put on muscle and bone. And it's like, dude, that's, it, it, it does that for babies. Okay. It's just going to make you put on fat. That's what milk is for is to help mammals grow and gain weight as quickly as possible. Good question. The fan lot, Australia here, 5.30 a.m. I'm two and a half months into carnivore and have lost 36 pounds. It's also my first time live. Huzzah, huzzah. Well done. Uh, up at 5.30, probably going to about to go out and do some sprints and then break your fast with some, with some ground beef or some steak and eggs. This is the way, guys. This is the future. This is, this is what good health is going to look like in the future. You can't, you can't stay up all night and then sleep all day and then get up and have a fruit smoothie or a bowl of cereal and skim milk and expect to be healthy. 
that's just not going to work. You know, you can't stay inside and never go out in the sun and expect to be healthy. That's just not going to work long term. You have to mimic the life that our ancestors lived, especially the food that they ate and what they drank. You need to mimic that as closely as possible. Now, I'm not advocating that you need to go live in a live in a cave or live in the woods. That's not necessary. We can still benefit from all of the modern things modern society gives us. But when it comes to the food you eat and the liquid you drink and the air you breathe, it better be as close to what our ancestors ate, drank, and breathed as possible. Okay, so if you think drinking Sunny Delight is good for you or you think drinking Diet Coke is somehow going to help your health, come on, come on, come on. No, no. So what did a human drink 50,000 years ago? They drank breast milk until, up until the time they were weaned. And then what did they drink for the rest of their life without exception? Water. That's it. Whether they live for 20 years or 100 years, they drink water. Every time they drink something, that's all they drink. Thank you, Peter. Iniko, the interaction of carnivore with psychiatric drugs. So there's no known interaction. The only thing that you're going to notice is that the more strict carnivore that you eat and also the higher fat carnivore that you eat, Iniko, you're going to, you're going to be able to work with your doctor and slowly wean down the strength of the psychiatric drugs. You're not going to need as strong a dose. And in many cases, you may be able to stop some of them completely with the help of your doctor. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys, that's the hour. Thanks so much for joining me. If you want more access to more Q&As like this with much fewer people watching, become a member of our community. There's a link in the show notes. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time, my friends. Eat meat, run, have sex, smile, laugh, be happy. <laughs>